everyone, Pally Tub here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. We find Kalark and company inside the goblin encampment, specifically the prisons. I had one more thing I wanted to finish off before moving on to our next quest goal, but it appears that we took a little too long in killing the other goblin leaders because the prisoner that was in here has broken out and killed every living goblin in this area. I think what happened was I went back to the Druid Grove to sell some stuff, and Zevlor was basically already packed up, ready to go. I did not take a reward from Zevlor, but I have been selling all of these goblin weapons back at town, and there's a lot of them. I have killed every goblin on the road, the roads are safe, and the tieflings can now leave. I wonder where this bear is, though. I also realized that we've spoken very little to Zevlor in this playthrough. When we came through here the first time, we saw him get, just get punched in the face. He got socked, and I let him sit there on the ground and recover. Then we never really got the mission from Kaga to go talk to him. But really, the goal of all of the tieflings here is just to be able to travel safely on the road. And with the goblin leaders taken down, they should be able to do that. Let's see if he has anything else he wants to add. We're ready to head to your camp. Are you? Yeah, they wanted to come back and party with us. You stay here for a minute. I'm going to see if we can find that bear that got away. Now, as you may recall, we had a bit of an explosive way of stealing the idol of Sylvanas in the Githyanki playthrough. Halson is over here yelling at Kaga. She's the only druid still alive here. Let's see if he acknowledges this in any way. Or were we truly enlightened? You took it upon yourself to undertake the right of thorns. I ought to exile you from this place forever. Instead, I shall listen to the explanation that you owe me. I owe you nothing. Goblins swarmed us like roaches while you stumbled after the past. You chose to abandon us. I chose to protect us. Silence. The right has been ended. Because the Savannah idol was stolen. <laughs> consider yourself a novice anew. You have forgotten the ways of the druids, our place in the natural order. You shall learn it all once again, right here. Backslide, and nature's fury will crush you. As you wish, Master Helsin. Funny enough, nature's fury is what he calls himself. Hey, we've never met. <laughs> we've literally, we're not even introduced. I'm just a strange alien creature standing here in your grove. Is that all? She tried to imprison a child, that poor tiefling. A misjudgment. One that should weigh heavily upon her. But the grove still needs her passion. You will soon see why. But enough of that for now. I owe you my thanks. The grove stands. Nature prevails. I owe you my thanks. And an introduction. I am Halsin, first druid of the Emerald Grove. And... I sense you have a problem you seek my help with. Oh, do you sense that? I don't know what you mean. What problem? Kind of rolls his eyes a little bit. <laughs> that problem. You're infected with the Mind Flare spawn, aren't you? Oak Father, preserve you, child. But something's different. You're aware of the monster inside you. You don't bow to the absolute like the true souls do. Uh, how is this possible? I don't know. It's no coincidence that we found each other, I'll wager. You're after a cure for this parasite. Someone is using very powerful magic to modify these tadpoles. They're using them to exert control over the infected. I'm sorry to say, I can't undo that magic. I can't cure you. But that doesn't mean I can't help. At the goblin camp, I hoped to find a way to remove the tadpoles. I failed, but I did find the next best thing. I found out where they come from. That's a good lead. I will do what I can to help you. Let us speak tomorrow. 
You and I both have matters to see to first. As for what you've done for the Grove, speak to Wrath. He will see to your reward. <laughs> yeah, everything I've done from the Grove. We have a unique Githyanki one here. This place means nothing to me, but a great deal to you, it seems. I hope the blood price was worth it. I'm just curious to see what the outcome is. Believe me, it is. The span of a mortal life isn't enough to grasp the importance of this place. Its roots touch everything. <laughs> well, there's a little more blood than you might be expecting. If you take a second to look around, what happens next, Housen? The journey to Moonrise Towers and all the dangers that that entails. But that's tomorrow's problem. Take some time for yourself tonight. Rest, celebrate. Come morning, I'll be by your side. We are a little roughed up. I will admit that. And the only vendor I know of right now is completely out of money because I've taken all of it. Easiest way to reset a vendor's inventory is to go to sleep. So now might be the time. However, we also have to keep in mind that I need these elixirs of hill giant strength and I only have three left. So that means I'm gonna have to drink another one when we start a new day. I'm zooming around trying to find some extra tieflings before we leave. These guys are all packed up and ready to go. Like I said, I didn't really mean to carry on the storyline this early. I think it triggered when I came back to the Druid Grove to sell. So I was expecting to have a little more time to talk to characters like Roland. There is a chance we'll see him at our encampment. If we don't, I believe his quest continues, so we'll be able to catch up with him there. But a lot of the kids are being prepped, like Rika over here is telling all these kids to make sure they stay together. And then Maul is talking to his band of miscreants over here. If any of your stuff goes missing, just let me know. Your family now. <laughs> and they seem pretty excited to hit the road too. So after a very long day, let's go to camp. And as we begin to wind down for the night, you see our camp is much more lively than it usually is. A lot of the tieflings are stopping in for tonight before they hit the road to Baldur's Gate. Seems like a great time to join in on the festivities. We worked hard and I think we are very strong for level four. You have no idea how good it feels to see these people smiling. We'll start with Zevlor. We could probably do without. But even so, thank you. You're welcome, friend. You're very welcome. The Bard is over here as well. Last we saw her, she was speaking with Astarian. This might be the wine talking, but I'm feeling inspired. Thinking of writing my next song about you. About me? Kalark? Any ideas? Any ideas? How about Kalark's courage? That's classic song material. Fitting. You're braver than half this camp combined. That deserves to be remembered. <laughs> well, there's going to be songs in many languages about Kalark, it seems. Astarian's reading a book over here in the corner, and he wants to chime in as well. You know, I never pictured myself as a hero. Yet I here you are. One they toast for saving so many lives. And now that I'm here... I hate it. This is awful. <laughs> Imagine Asterion really thinks he's the hero after he's the one who lit the fuse to blow up the Druid Grove. Oh, you did a good thing. Suck it up and enjoy yourself. Like, we both are just 100% on board with this is the good playthrough. Enjoy myself. There's a worm in my brain. I'm surrounded by idiots and... All I've got to drink is wine that tastes like vinegar. That is true. The goblins would have thrown a wilder party. I'm just looking for a little more excitement. A little more fun. What is your idea of fun? By the hells. Sex, my dear. A night of passion. Oh. With me? With Kalark? Just to be Oh, clear. thank God. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can you imagine? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ugh. No. Anyway, don't let me keep you. I'm sure you have someone else to sniff around. 
you know, come to think of it, I have been admiring Lazel just a little bit. Maybe we could break the ice. I have seen the Kithraki tear a screaming Neogi's legs from its belly to okay. fashion into blades. Yet, they could not match your nerve today. It was enough to drive me to madness. Wait, I drove you to- for us both, you've turned your back on me so often. What have I turned my back on you? What are you talking about? I'm grateful for your aid. You're a very gifted warrior, Lazo. Blacketh demands of me no less. Same as me. Only you'd earn the right to lay at my side. Come morning, you will wonder. You will wonder how my lips might have tasted, how my fingers on your skin might have felt. Oh, but do enjoy yourself this night. I intend to myself. Oh my God. It's like we have a rivalry and she's trying to make me jealous right now. What's going on? Hey, Mole, what are you doing over here? If any of your stuff goes missing, I'm family now. Thanks, Mole. You're just being a little outcast over here. This is something that's been added in one of the post launch patches for Baldur's Gate. This mirror allows you to redesign your character's looks. I mean, Kalark is perfect. There's no reason I have to do that. Thank you. For, for what, Gil? I'm glad you sought me out. Amidst all this merriment, I wasn't sure we'd have a chance to speak this evening. Were our bond a little stronger, I might even have shared a moment of magic with you. Why is Perhaps everyone telling me I suck? Our fledgling acquaintanceship has not yet taken flight. Such intimacy will have to wait. Okay, first of all, Gail, I'm not I'm interested not in you! Oh my god, I'm going to sleep. Everybody's drunk. They're trying to hit on me. I'm done, dude. I'm done. I'm out. You know, everyone's talking about the good times they're going to have, but I just see everyone passed out at the same campfire just like every I other night. I you enjoyed your evening. After all your efforts, it was well deserved. It may be some time before you're afforded another such night. There is much to be done, and I promised I would help you however I could. I'm certain a cure for you can be found at Moonrise Towers, but it's complicated. The journey specifically, it's extremely perilous, though it seems you're well accustomed to navigating danger. What's so dangerous about it? To get to the towers, you'll need to pass through a terrible place. A cursed place. This curse shrouds everything in shadow. You will not find life, light, or anything natural there. Any who linger are twisted by the curse. They become shadow beings, tormented, dangerous souls. There has to be another way to cure myself. My kin have dealt with these parasites before. This is the Githyanki option. By all means, pursue any leads you may have. But I sense all roads will lead to Moonrise. You could go overland, along the Risen Road or through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel somewhere in the ruined Temple of Saluna. It leads to Moonrise Towers through the Underdark. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorn built a secret stronghold deep down there before rallying a whole army of Dark Justicias, Shah worshippers. Aridan and his lot were looking for a way down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song. Those are the adventurers that already ran more. away. From this stronghold, Ketherick's forces could access both the Temple of Saluna and Moonrise Towers. But he was defeated before he could launch an attack. If you can find this place, I'll wager it will reveal a more direct path to Moonrise Towers. And maybe even bypass the worst of the Shadow Curse. Hmm. What would you do in our situation, Halson? The decision is yours, but I'd favor the Underdark. Even a place like that is the lesser evil compared to the Shadow Cursed Lands. I found a hidden entrance in the Temple of Salune already. The way is clear. Already? <laughs> if only I'd gone with you instead of Aradin. I would like to join your camp, if you'll allow me. I can offer my skills, my counsel. I've long sought to return to Moonrise Towers. It seems our fates have aligned. That sounds like a great idea. Happy to have you. May Sylvanas guide us. 
<laughs> Maybe I should have asked, what about the grove? Because there's only two druids left inside of it. Maybe that was worth asking. Well, here we go, team. I'm going to have to drink my elixir of giant hill strength just to be able to move around. I am over encumbered without it. Now that we are done partying, if we go back to the Druid Grove, you may notice someone standing in a different spot. Kaga has moved to the top of the ramp. Unfortunately, Will is still here as a witness. I was going to beat her up right there. We might have to wait a second. Because we rested a full day, the inventory of this guy has refreshed. So I'm going to dump a lot of this goblin loot into him. Like I said, I've tried to be pretty thorough with this. And he's almost out of money for the day. Our grand total is up to 2,740 gold. I'm pretty happy with that amount. And most of that is from just goblin loot like this. On the way out, Kaga is standing here very ominously by a cliff. She was a very bad leader. Let's see what she has to say for herself. Peace. Enjoy it while it lasts. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you should have tried to enjoy some peace. Uh, we're going to Minor Illusion by the cliff wall. As she goes to check that out, Kalark gets into position, slows down time, and prepares a pushing attack. It looks like it won't let me throw her off that way. What if I just try a throw action? Oh yeah, like right here. Move up to the cliff side. There's gotta be a way. There's gotta be a place I can throw her. Come on. Yes, right there. Throw her down. Yes. Your violence. Okay. <laughs> she stopped mid-throw to let me know my violence wouldn't be accepted. She took um 61 damage from the throw. Now all we have to do is finish her off without anyone else seeing it. Oh, it looks like that plan may not be working. Oh, I didn't sneak up. Oh, that was almost so perfect. So I have to kill her somehow. I think the easiest way I could do that is by tossing down this alchemist fire. There we go. Let's cag it down in one turn. Now, why did I go through all of the trouble of doing that? I mean, hasn't she been punished enough? First of all, no. No, she has not. Uh, I think this is a little bit better for everybody. Secondly, she has the Brood Mother's Revenge, a necklace that will imbue the wielder's weapon with a poison whenever they are healed. We can give this to Lazel. If she equips that, that'll be her first amulet. Now, even as a bonus action, we can either use Healing Word or our Bardic Inspiration. Remember, that heals now as well and that will imbue another 1d6 onto Lazel's weapon. Remember, she already has fire on that weapon, causing it to deal 1d4 damage, so that's starting to add up pretty quick. Now, apparently, I can still come inside to get my reward. I think Wrath might be the only druid left, <laughs> other than the vendor up top. You've done it. You brought House in back. Thank you. And I'm immediately taking him with me. No. Thanks is not enough. May <laughs> Sylvanas bless you for all your days. And you too, friend. I cannot imagine taking on a camp full of goblins was a simple task. Nor blowing up a grove full of druids. But that's why I am the enlightened one. For someone like me, it was so simple. Fair enough. I should not have underestimated you. Let me show you on your map where you can find the cash. Take this rune. You'll need it. Thanks, bud. Place it among the pedestals inside our library. When the wolf glows brightest, everything in the vault below will be yours. So I'm just illuminating all of the stones around this wolf statue here. This is in Nettie's medical office. For the last of the stands, we are going to have to insert the tablet, combine those. And then when we click on this, we should see a secret path begin to open up. Why did they all get deselected again? Is there a time thing? There we go. 
Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Inside of here, we see a pole arm. This thing is called Sorrow. And if I remember right, it's really not that bad. Seven to 16 damage also has the Sorrowful Lash ability on it, spell on it, which allows you to pull enemies towards you, I believe. It's just like Vine Whip. Yeah, you pulled 10 feet closer to you. This item means nothing to me. We will give it to Gale. Oh, you'll have to speak slowly. I'm finding it quite difficult to concentrate. The might. Condition gnawing at my insides like a teething displacer kitten. Well, good news, bud. I brought you an that artifact. Most gratifying to hear. May I? Give Gale an artifact. We have a few for him to pick from now. Actually, Sorrow is not on the list, which I find weird. But we'll give him the Jagged Spear. Now, how long are we going to have to do this, Gale? I'm giving up several hundred gold to you at this point. Not to mention the scrolls. It is a strange experience. Each time anew, I kind of lost soul is spelunking through the darkness that is me, only to be sacrificed on the dread altar of the heart. Somehow the second artifact hasn't had the effect of the first. It somewhat relieved the discomfort, but I fear my hunger hasn't quite... Uh... What's happening, Gail? <clears throat> The magic isn't having the effect it should have. It's not like the last time, like a rainstorm that quells a forest fire. It merely drizzles. The embers still sizzle. The fire remains undefeated. I'm not certain what's going on, but nothing good. Please, I need to think. I need to retrace my steps to a glade of calm and think. Thank you for the artifact. A great deal of trouble it was, too. A great deal of trouble, indeed. Hey, no problem, Gale. Well, we could easily enter the Underdark from the Cellunite waypoint that we already have unlocked. We've already taken down a Minotaur in here as well, although we have not ventured further than that. However, there is also a way down from the Blighted Village that I haven't done in a while. So let's take a peek down the from well. Overgrowth of moss. The well looks unremarkable. We'll peer into the well. Investigation check. I should pass this with flying colors. No need for anything else. Oh, like I said, no need for anything else. Exactly. My stones line the wall. At the bottom, something gleams in the dappled light. Mm, climb down the rope. Giant webs. They'll alert their spinners with a mere touch. So if we touch any of the webs here, the spiders that left those webs may know that we are here. So we're gonna have to be very careful about where we walk. And let me tell you, as a melee combatant, I don't feel like I'm gonna be particularly useful here, at least at the start, depending on how things go. So all eyes are on Astarian. We have these weird sight lines moving around in the deep, dark recesses of this cave. Some of them are arachnids. The others, I'm not quite sure what they are. Uh, I'm gonna start off with the surprise round, just a ranged attack there. Uh, I'd like to do another one, if it would let me. It says I have disadvantage on this. We'll take the shot either way. So surprise round means that I get to do all of my stuff before they get to act, and then the turn order, the initiative, kicks into gear. Uh, I'm gonna fire one more time, 56% chance. We got a critical hit of 14 on the face spider. He's almost been taken down. Now it's their turn. We're seeing dashes happening from the edder cap on the backside of the room. The face spider is going to teleport forward and then cast some kind of poison attack up at Astarian. The other face spider doing the same venomous discharge. This one does connect for 10 damage. It seems as though the majority of our party has been brought into the turn order now as well. Some webs being placed on Lazelle. That's gonna stop her from moving. Well, with Gale, I'm going to creep up a little bit closer to these rocks. He's not in the fight just yet. We're going to start off with a fire bolt on the weakened phase spider. It says I failed the sneak, but the fire bolt still connected, so we are good to go. 
Now we are going to fire off a shot. 72% chance to hit on the Edder Cap. That was also approaching from that back corner of the room. Another web going out, this time on Gale, stopping him from moving. In fact, the majority of this platform has been webbed at this point. If I jump down there, that's going to be nine damage. So Kalark is going to attempt to run, but he's been completely in webbed. They completely wrapped around his feet, stopping him from moving after just a few steps. There is a way we can get rid of these webs very easily, and that is with any source of fire. In fact, I think... Oh, well, Lazel only has burning hands. That's a little bit overkill, but I think Lazel would be considering that right about now. I could get Yaki jump and then potentially get myself out of harm's way. We're just gonna do a regular leap here and then a ranged attack. Let me do a hamstring shot. Try to stop this guy from moving. I don't want him repositioning. The damage connected, the hamstring portion did not. We'll go ahead and end Lazel's turn right there. He just kind of yells at me. That's a good outcome. Where's that other face spider again? Oh, of course, on a web nearby. Astarian does have an angle. He can shoot that web. He does, and it connects, making it break away and causing the spider to fall for only six damage. I was expecting a little more damage there. I'm not gonna lie. Let me go ahead and do a Bardic Inspiration. Oh, you can't target yourself with that. Oh, okay. I was gonna use that as an easy way of healing and saving some spell slots, but that's totally okay. We're gonna try to move again on Kalark. If we can get out of the webs, we will be good to go. The last possible pixel stopped me from moving. The face spider makes their way up to the high ground. Cutting words. So this is a 1d6. We can use this as our reaction. It has a chance of making this attack not hit our friend. So they need a 14, they rolled a 19. That means I need a max roll cutting word in order to make the attack miss. We're not going to react to that because I don't think it would work. I don't think we could connect with anything. Uh, Gale is very, very close to the enemy here. I don't think I'm gonna do anything. We're just gonna end our turn. He only had a bonus action because he uh, did an action to get into the fight, to get into the turn order. We are gonna try to jump with Lazelle to the side of the Edder Cap. She is gonna pull out that great weapon of hers and start swinging. <laughs> oh, that was a lot of damage. That'll do, and that concludes her turn. I was really hoping this guy would try to run away. Instead, he held his ground. Let's see if we can fire off a shot with Hysteria and onto the face spider. It does connect. Good damage. Beautiful. This Edder Cap is deciding to dash, climbing up towards Lazelle. Oh, she's the scariest one here. That is a bold choice. I'm going to try it again. Kalark moves through the webs. Will he make it out? He did. He goes for a swing on the face spider. It doesn't connect. He goes for a toppling attack. That ends the spider's life. We didn't use any cutting words. We're not even sure what those would have been for. A fire bolt onto one of the Edder Caps from Gale. Connects for five damage to its back. We're then going to attack the Edder Cap in front of Lazel. And then I would love to do a pushing attack here, but the pushing attack did not connect. Let's do a um, vicious mockery. This is going to give disadvantage on his next attack. We know he can only attack Lazel. Ooh, web, that's not gonna do any damage and we weren't even planning on moving Death anyway. Uh, fire bolt from Gale onto the Edder Cap. We connect for eight damage. Lazel then swings 50% chance to hit. And she does. We took a decent amount of damage there, but that's not the real conflict that this cave is housing. The real enemy is lurking just ahead Somewhere on these upper webs, <laughs> there it is. That's the face spider matriarch, the mama to all of these blue spiders oh, that we just fought. This fight is really, really fun, especially if you prepare for it in the right way. We are going to second wind on Lazel, then do a short rest. She has that second wind back and pretty much everyone's at full health. That's not bad at all. I have a new scroll for Gale to learn. This is Scorching Ray. That's gonna be a hundred gold. I think that's very well spent. Remember, he is a fire mage with his newest feat. 
Uh, we're going to need to equip that for this fight. I'm going to swap out Grease for it, and we'll go ahead and bring Scorching Ray in. Now, we can do a lot of easy maintenance to make this fight a lot more manageable if we just break all these eggs, because throughout the conflict, the boss is going to be basically hatching all of these, and it's so many little spiders. If I can avoid dealing with it, I will. So there's this group over here on the, what is this, the north side that we can break. The problem is if we have to go forward and touch that web, we're going to alert the boss. So far, so good. All of those have been broken. Next on the southern side, there are these roots that I could traverse down to the lower area with. I'm just going to sit up here and break these phase spider eggs. I've taken the ranged weapon off of Asterion and moved it over to Gale. I'm gonna use Misty Step to get over the gap and then turn-based mode just to slow the spider down a little bit more. It does look like the spider is outside of my area of influence though, so that's not gonna do anything. Gale's not really good with ranged weapons, but as long as he can shoot one a little bit, that's all we need him to do. And then when the spider is coming over to investigate, you know, doing its patrol, I'm just gonna sit as far outside of that area as I can. We're burning a level two spell slot to make this happen, but I think it's a level two spell slot that is very, very worth. Especially, oh God, are we okay? Especially if I can get Gale back out of this, although using a level two spell slot to get back might be a bit excessive. I suppose we shall see. I think we'll have an opening here. Let's move up very quickly. Three eggs left. That's all that's there. Gale almost in position. We fire on the first, second, and third. There will be no reinforcements for the boss in this fight. Go ahead and give that bow back to its rightful owner. And try to immediately use it because the spider is in the perfect spot. Just like before, we can break the web. That web causes whoever's on it to fall. And the spider just took 28 damage. You know what's hilarious? It doesn't know we're in combat yet. <laughs> it took a minute to figure that one out. It does fire off another poison attack at Kalark. We could just simply throw some alchemist fire onto the web here and cause the same fall to happen again. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. That was 42 damage this time. Why was that so much more? We're gonna go ahead and end our turn. Some of the other face spiders are gonna be joining in very soon. Gale is not in this conflict just yet. I'm not convinced he even needs to be just yet. The cutting words would be useful here. However, it did not roll high enough or we took damage from the poison on the ground. I'm not sure which one. Astarian is up. We could try a push. It's not very likely to happen though. So let's do a dissonant whispers. Try to deal some damage onto the face spider next to us. 13 damage and they are frightened. So they're not gonna be attacking me again, but I am gonna get away from that corner just in case. The other face spider on the ground floor uses a dash action into a teleport to move closer to Lazel. I cannot throw this enemy, but I can try to swing at it. Unfortunately, that swing does not connect. The main matriarch is thinking about moving up top, I think. We see a cast of her wrath being used. Uh, that might save her, does it? No, Kalark took full damage there. I thought that was Lazel for a moment. And then that follow-up swing does a ton of damage too. We're immediately gonna go into a toppling attack. Uh, unfortunately, they were not toppled, and I'm gonna swing my weapon right after that, dealing 10 damage. The face spider next to us is frightened, but still moves closer with a teleport. That's an illegal maneuver. That should not be allowed. Uh, I'm gonna try Crown of Madness. Oh, they must be humanoids. That does hurt my plan a little bit. Gale decides now is the time to get involved and he's going to prepare a Scorching Ray. This Scorching Ray is gonna fire all three attacks at the face spider next to Lazel. That is a burnt spider, look at that. And I think that's all Gale is gonna need to do. Now Lazel's gonna move up. 30% chance to hit, it does not connect. She's going to action surge. Should she try again? Or should she just throw something? I'm gonna try again. Oh, I believed and I was right to do so. 
Wonderful. Now, Starion on his turn. Uh, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a, I think I'm gonna do a Dissonant Whispers again. They're frightened one more time. That's still, they still have a reaction. That's okay, I think I could kill him. I just needed that extra damage there. And there you go, the phase spider taken down. That was beautiful. When the wearer casts a spell that deals poison damage, it deals an additional 1d4 damage. You know, I bet I could come up with a build that uses that. I bet, I bet that wouldn't be too hard. With that, our party is taken down. One of the harder fights inside of Act One. The spider has been killed. Granted, I did I did take a bit of a beating there. We can heal that up, no problem. But a dark amethyst is lying on the ground over here in the corner. This is the missing piece of that spooky book that we looted in an earlier episode. Now, if everyone would kindly walk onto the spider web. We will have Gale learn permanently how to cast Slowfall. Then we are going to prepare that and glide down effortlessly into the world below. This is my favorite way of getting into the Underdark. We didn't need to do it, but I did want that orb. That orb is gonna make it worth it. <laughs> Look at him, he's so graceful. <laughs> I hear something walking around. I wonder what that could be. Hey, everybody, get down and leave. Let's explore. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you did enjoy today's episode. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and check back again tomorrow for the next installment. Gail's already determined that there are Mykonids nearby. He really is a scholar. <laughs>